Hello everybody, welcome to Unit 4 Biology Area of Study 2. Today we'll be looking at determining the relatedness between species. So this is looking at um, any evidence that can show how species are related to each other. So looking at structural morphology and also molecular homology. And then also looking at phylogenetic trees and how we could represent the relatedness between species. So in terms of looking at relatedness, we're looking at how closely or how um, long ago they may have had a common ancestor to each other um, and how closely related they are, really. So do they share similar DNA? Do they share similar features? That kind of thing. So the way that we can do this is we can identify what we call homologous structures. And these are features that might be present in um, different species and they may look and function a little bit differently, but the end of the day they are derived from a common ancestor okay so we can see here some um, examples of a homologous structure as well an analogous structure however is a feature that is present in two or more species that fulfill the same function but they don't originate from a common ancestor okay so homologous we're looking at common ancestor and maybe functioning differently but analogous is functioning similarly, but not from a common ancestor. So you can see here a bird wing and an insect wing. Wings have the purpose of allowing flight, but they do not share a common ancestor or originate from a common ancestor. A vestigial feature is a feature that's basically lost most of its usefulness as a result of evolution um, over time by natural selection. So it's a feature that's no longer needed. Molecular homology is another way that we can compare the relatedness. We can look at the similarities and differences in nucleotide sequences of the DNA um, or look at the amino acid sequences as well to determine relatedness too. So we can see um, here that uh, chimpanzees are more closely related to humans because they share a lot more similar amino acid sequences than, say, a kangaroo and a human. Okay, um, So we can compare those um, as well. This information is going to also enable us to create what we call a phylogenetic tree. So a phylogenetic tree is basically a visual representation of um, an evolutionary relationship. So we can see like the lines of descent and we use that molecular data or any other evidence to sort of create um, these. They're not fixed. They may change over time if we find out more information they might have to change. Um, they can be represented in a few different ways. Um, so you can see here they can be drawn diagonal, vertical or horizontally, um, but they all show the same information. So usually the tips, okay, those edges, I might point it out on this one, um, will show their descendant groups. Um, the node is basically where an ancestor of two or more descendants may be as well. So over here where they might split. Um, a branch will indicate the speciation event occurring and it can show the relationship between different species um, and ancestors as well. And the branch length can be shown as well, which is important. Um, the root is basically the common ancestor of all of the species that are shown on that particular phylogenetic tree. And a sister taxa, like this one here, is where two groups share a common ancestor, but they're not related to any other group. So they share the most sort of original common ancestor, um, but they're sort of unique in that way. So you can see here, if we're looking at this diagram, um, the most sort of left or bottom shows like the oldest time frame and then the closest to the splitting is where there is the newest time frame that we're talking about. If they come off of the same node, that is where we say that they've shared a common ancestor. So the common ancestor of A and C is where my mouse is here. The common ancestor of A, C and D would therefore be over here. Okay, so there's some speciation event that has then caused that divergence there. We need to be able to interpret a phylogenetic tree if we're given one, or if you're given a molecular sequence um, of some amino acids to show which ones might be closer related and which ones may not be closely related and see if you can interpret that to a phylogenetic tree as well. If you have any questions regarding this, please leave it in the comments below and I'm happy to help out when I can. Have a great day.